when you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this video, we look at phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine serves as a cell's power bank, and when you have metabolic syndrome, the power bank is often not fully charged. So in key clutch moment, the cell can run out of juice. ATP is the ultimate source of power in a cell. The energy is tied up in the high energy phosphate bond inside the ATP molecules. To function properly, cells need lots of ATP. The vast majority of ATP is generated inside specialized organelles known as the mitochondria by a process known as oxidative phosphorylation. The term oxidative tips us off to the fact that the process requires oxygen. When the oxygen levels inside a cell are low, the power supply can become limited, impacting cell performance. If the situation persists for an extended period of time, it can lead to cell death. So cells have a backup system which kicks in when oxygen levels drop. When both oxygen and fuel are plentiful, some of the ATP that is generated is diverted. The diversion involves pulling off the high energy phosphate bond from the ATP and sticking it onto creatine to create phosphocreatine. Now, the phosphocreatine just sits there holding the energy. This is especially useful because if supplies of ATP exceed the cell's requirements, cells opt to power down because generating more power than is needed is inherently wasteful and potentially risky. The phosphocreatine system allows a cell to expand the ATP store by tenfold. If the power supply dips, creatine kinase immediately pulls the phosphate off sticking it onto an ADP so there's no interruption in power. Now, this system can't power the cell for very long, but it doesn't have to. Restoring oxygen supplies is a priority, so a multitude of systems kick in to ensure adequate oxygen delivery. Now, every cell will have creatine power banks, but the amount of creatine inside a cell is variable. The phosphagen system is particularly important for cells with high energy requirements. The exact amount inside a cell depends on creatine supplies. Now, the creatine supply to the body is guaranteed. It's homemade. Production is a two-step process. Step one takes place in the kidney. It involves bringing together the amino acids glycine and arginine to create guanodinoacetic acid. The enzyme that does this is arginine glycine amidinotransferase. Step two takes place in the liver. The enzyme here is guanidinoacetic acid methyltransferase. This pops a methyl group onto the guanidinoacetic acid to make creatine. The chemistry is pretty easy, but those methyl groups are precious. So creatine imports are preferred. Now the major source of dietary creatine is meat. In fact, the name creatine is derived from the Greek word for meat, krias. It's estimated that our ancestors ate two to four grams of creatine a day, something most modern humans aren't doing. The other problem with modern living is it's easy to be short of those methyl groups. You see, methyl groups are involved in lots of day-to-day -day body chemistry and also in many detoxification processes. We're increasingly living in a chemical world. More chemical exposures necessitate more methyl groups. Combine this with delivery issues, which go hand in hand with metabolic syndrome, it's easy to end up with lower levels of phosphocreatine than ideal. This impacts cell energetics, especially in situations where oxygen levels are compromised something that is also more likely to happen when you're metabolically challenged. 
So boosting creatine levels is potentially helpful. In fact, studies have suggested creatine supplements can improve sugar control. Now, you can do it through diet, eating meat, or by taking a creatine supplement. You don't need massive quantities, just enough to tip the balance in your favor. It's estimated you pee out 2 grams a day. You see, creatine is not all that stable. It dehydrates, and when this happens, it becomes creatinine. If that name looks familiar, it is. Doctors measure this on a regular basis. The reason they do this is the amount of creatinine in your blood gives them insight into just how well your kidneys are working. Higher levels suggest kidney problems. Now, more creatine going in automatically means more creatinine going out. There is nothing untoward about this. It's chemistry. But you may want to give your doctor a heads up if you're supplementing with creatine. Now, raising creatine is helpful, but it's not the full Monty. Better cell energetics is probably not the real value of improving creatine imports. The real value comes from the fact that it cuts your liver some slack. Remember, methyl groups are precious, and they can be in short supply. Thanks to genetics, lifestyle, and body chemistry, this can compromise fat exports from your liver. Here are a few of the journal articles I've used to tell the phosphocreatine story. Phosphocreatine is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the body that are amiss when you're suffering from metabolic syndrome. You can learn more about some of them in our ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch future episodes. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.